What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. I'm your host Robbie, and in this video I'm going to show you how to add a React front end to a Go web app. So in a previous video I kind of showed you my whole setup. We did some NVC with some HTML templating. But one thing I left out of that video was adding a front end framework. So in this video we're going to basically expand upon that and add a React front end to it. So if you didn't see that first video, I'll link it up on the screen uh, right now. And if you don't want to watch that video, I'll put the source code that I'm going to be starting with down in the description. When it comes to adding React, there's really two ways we could go about it. Uh, the first way would be, hey, let's just take the Go app, uh, make that an API and keep it completely separate. And then we'll have our React app somewhere else. But really, if it's not a gigantic app, it's kind of annoying having two separate environments. Um, so the second option would be, hey, let's just add it into our Go app. We'll have everything all in the same place and it'll be nice and clean and easy to use. So I'll be showing you that second option. And yeah, just make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll get right into it. All right, so here's what I'll be starting out with. This is just a basic fiber app, and uh, we're connecting to a database. We got some HTML templates. Uh, we're serving static assets, and then we got some API routes here to create and fetch tasks. And then I just have a root route right here, which just renders this empty uh, HTML page right here. So. To add React, we're going to have to use JavaScript, and we're going to need a JavaScript bundler, and we're going to get all our packages from NPM. So let's go to our terminal, and uh, let's open up a new tab, and we'll just run npm init-yes. This is going to create a package.json file, which allows us to install packages from NPM. So let's install some with npm install, and then we're going to want React and React DOM. And then we will be using TypeScript, so let's grab our uh, types and stuff. So let's go npm install, and this time it'll be dash dash save dev. And we're going to want at types slash react, and at types slash react dom, just like that. And then we're going to need a bundler. So you could use Webpack, you could use Parcel, there's a bunch of them. But the one I'm going to be using is called esbuild. And if you haven't, uh, whoops. If you haven't used this one before, I'd recommend it. It's extremely fast and it's super lightweight and quick to get going with. I used to use Webpack on everything. I recently switched to this. So you can use Webpack if you want, but I'd recommend checking this out if you haven't yet. So uh, we're gonna need this package also. So let's go back and uh, let's go npm install save dev and we'll get ES build. We should have all the packages we need now. So let's go back to our directory in VS Code. And uh, let's just create a new folder and we'll call it front end. Oops, front end. And then in here, let's just create, uh, I guess, application.tsx. And then in here, we'll create a component. So I just have an application component right here. I'm going to delete the export default part. And then I'm going to go to the React website to see how to add a React to our website. They just changed it, so I don't remember it. Here it is right here. Let's copy these lines. And then uh, let's go down here. And we're going to say, hey, let's render the application component that we created up here. Just like that. And then it's going to give us an error here, and you have to import it. Uh, we want React DOM from uh, React DOM, and they changed it. You have to add slash client now. And then uh, let's just move this all in one line. So let's copy this and place it in here. And then, yeah, we have to give React a element that we want it to populate. So it's looking for like button container. We'll call ours application. So it's going to look for the application div, and then uh, we're just going to put a little shout mark at the end here to make that error go away. And yeah, so it's looking for this div right here, which we haven't created yet. So let's go to our index file right here, and we'll just add an empty div. Div ID is equal to application. There we go. And now, uh, yeah, we have to bundle up this app, and we're basically going to put it in the public folder where we're uh, serving static assets. So let's get started with esbuild. So to do that, you create an esbuild.js file in the root directory. 
And then I always forget how to do it. I always reference this stack overflow answer, but let's just go ES build SAS. And it always pops up with the answer I like, which is right here. And this guy breaks it down how to do it real good. So let's just copy his code right here. And we put this within that ES build file. So let's go to VS code, paste it in, and we're in node. So we got to go const ES build is equal to require ES build. And then, yeah, we give it some entry points. So ours is going to be uh, front end slash application dot TSX. And then uh, let's do some styles too. So let's create a new file called style dot SCSS. I like SCSS. In here, let's just put uh, margin zero just to make sure it works. And then let's go back here. And our second um, entry point will be front end slash style dot SCSS. And to use SCSS, you have to use an ES build plugin. So let's copy that one. Let's see, it shows it right down here. It's the ES build SAS plugin. So let's grab that also. Let's go back here, npm install save dev, and we need ES build SAS plugin. And then we just have to import it at the top and we throw it in the plugins array. So let's go back here and let's import it. So we want const SAS plugin from no, we don't want from, we want equals to require, we want ES build SAS plugin. There we go. And then let's just place it in here. I think you have to do the brackets or the parentheses, but let's double check. Yeah, we do. So that looks good. And then we're going to modify this a bit. We'll add watch. And this just makes it so it's going to watch files for changes and compile whenever there's a change. And we can also add minify so it actually compresses our files and makes it a lot smaller. Just add true right there. And then out directory, we're going to place ours within our public folder, public slash assets. Let's go public slash assets. And then to run this, we just go in our package.json. We'll add a new script called dev. And then dev is going to run node es build. Uh, dot JS Just like that. So now let's run this new dev script we created. Let's go here and We'll go npm run dev And we get an error. It says SAS plus is not defined. So I made a typo somewhere. Let's go to our ES build What do I have SAS plus? It's supposed to be slap <laughs> SAS plugin. So let's fix that Here we go. We'll go back and try it again and there we go, it says build complete. So let's check our folder now. If we go in here, we get application.js and style.css. That's pretty much it. You don't have to do a ton of config. So that's why I like ES build. So now let's link that up on our page. So let's go below here and we'll go script src and it's gonna be slash assets slash what do we call it? Let's see, uh, slash application.js. And we're also going to link up our style sheet. So let's go up here and we'll go link rel is equal to. Uh, it's going to be a style sheet. And the href is going to be slash assets slash style.css. There we go. And uh, yeah, if it's working, it should say application. So let's go to our page and try it out. I'll go here and refresh and we get application. So we're now in React mode. So. Uh, yeah, one of the problems you're going to have is, let me demonstrate this real quick. We're going to have to add a React Router DOM. So let's add that. npm install dash dash save React Router DOM. And let's set up React Router DOM. So let's go in here. And uh, instead of just rendering the application, we'll render a router. So let's go browser router. And we gotta get that from React Router DOM. So let's go import from. It's gonna be from React Router DOM. We want browser router, we want routes, and we want route. So just one sec, we're doing some setup. So you'll typically you'll probably have uh, multiple pages in your front end app. So let's create a couple pages. Um where am I at? Front end is right here. Um, I'm going to create a pages directory and in here we'll have home. 
about tsx, we'll create a home component, and then we'll have about dot tsx and we'll create a uh, about component and then let's go back here so we're doing a browser router and that receives routes and then we can add our routes in there so let's get rid of this and uh, let's go and add a route and this is going to be the index route and it's going to render the home element so let's add home in here close that up and then let's add a second route and this one is going to be at the path slash about. And um, let's put about in there. And then let's go to our home route and let's add a link to the about page. So let's go here and we'll just go link to slash about. Go to about page. And the link comes from React Router DOM also, so make sure to import that. And uh, let's go back and check out our site. And uh, it didn't work, so I did something wrong. Let's see what's going on. I'm not uh, rebuilding the site, so let's run that command again. It's built. Let's refresh. And we get an error, so I did something wrong. Let's see what's going on. Unexpected end of input. Application line 8. Let's check that out. Application line 8. I don't even need this anymore, first of all. See if that fixes it. There we go. And now I go to about page and I get the about page. But what's going to happen is if I refresh here, I just get a 404 page. And that's because slash about doesn't forward to the React router. So if we go to our Go app and we go to main.go, the only path it's listening to is just the root path. So you might be tempted to just go, hey, let's just listen to every other path. And then we could go back and refresh and it works and that's cool but that brings up another problem is that say we do go to a route that doesn't exist we still get the react app and we're getting a 200 status which is bad we gotta give it a 404 so to fix that really you have to um really set up all the front end routes in here also so i guess an easy way to do it is you can just create a slice so let's go front end routes and this is going to be equal to We'll do a string slice, and then our routes are slash, and uh, slash about. And then we can loop through these and create a route for each one. So let's go uh, for front end routes, or let's forget loops, for index and route is equal to range front end routes. And we're not going to use the index, so let's get rid of that. And we can just copy this. And then right here, we'll put the route. So it's going to loop through, put the route right here, and create a path for each one. And that should do it. Let's go back. So I go to About. I get the About page. I go Home. I get the Home page. And I go to Unknown Route. And I get the actual 404 status, which is much better. And... uh yeah, another short and sweet video for you guys, but that's my setup. So you could uh, build out your whole front end here now. And then, yeah, just one thing to note is that um, you want to put your front end routing at the bottom here. So it tries all the API routes and stuff first. And then if it gets past all that, it'll then render your app. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the icon in the middle of the screen to subscribe. And there's a couple videos on the right for you to check out. Till next time. Bye.